What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, and here today at the Nerd Castle, I have a plan. As you'll see, I've gone around and I've talked to a bunch of lords and I've gathered them near Sargoth. In this episode, the number one thing that I'd like to accomplish is I would like to take Sargoth back for the Kingdom of Nords. We're going to try and help them re-establish their kingdom and become a major player on the map one last time. Now, they do have very large armies, which is going to make this process very, very easy for us. Let's suggest a course of action. We're going to say, let's take Sargoth. They're going to say very well to the walls. And up they go. You guys had told me about that course of action right there. I had never known that you had to do that in order to make a siege happen. I just did them all myself. So, thank you for that information. Let's go ahead and jump in on this fight. Now, this should be a reasonably easy battle. I don't want to talk out of turn, though, because these things have the odd... I don't know, they have the odd tendency to go a lot worse than you expect them to. Now, I don't think this castle is going to be particularly difficult... Just looking at its layout, I think we've got to take that wall first. But if we can shoot some of these guys... Yeah, I want all of my archers to be lined up back here. And if we can shoot some of them off the walls, that's really what I want to do. I want to thin them around every area that we can. They look like they've spawned pretty far back on both sides. We are going to take some attritional damage here, but we came with about two to three times as many units as they have. So it should be okay. The total count on us, I think, was about 700. And the count for them was about 310. So everything should work out, I hope. If this siege goes badly, it's probably going to hurt our reputation in a pretty negative way. I mean, I don't think there's any way that this is going to positively affect us. I mean, getting the king killed in a suicide battle tends to be a bad thing to do. It doesn't open up your career prospects, but it's definitely like kind of those, you know, take foot, insert in mouth type situations. Now then, I want my archers right here now that the fight is done. And so once the archers are up the walls, it looks like we've already taken it. I'm trying to pay attention to the battle right now, but there's so many arrows flying around that it's making me really nervous. With these sieges, you always have to be careful about the way that you engage them. Simply because there's always somebody back up in there who's trying to blast you. I'm trying to get that guy right there. If you see him in the yellow, he shoot me with arrows. Hopefully one of my guys takes a shot at him because I can't get the shots off as well as he does. And unfortunately... There we go. I got him right between the eyes, which is exactly where I wanted to hit him. So we've killed off a couple guys right there. And what I want to do is I want to stand off to the side right here with the rest of my troops. We're just going to fire up and into the back of this group. See if we can't nail some headshots, except for that guy right there who's being a terrible... He's a door when I need a window. So we're just going to fire into the back. And if we can nail headshots, we nail headshots. If we don't, we don't. But in this case, it shouldn't be that bad, because that's like a two-foot shot. You know what? Don't step in front of me when I'm aiming. It's like stepping in front of a man with a rifle. Just a terrible, terrible idea. Some of that basic firing line, or firing range etiquette. Ooh, there we go. There's a nice shot. I wasn't planning on hitting some of these guys. I mean, my screen is really small right now because one of the things you guys don't know, if you don't do YouTube, is essentially you have to record everything either in 1920 by 1080 or you have to record it in 1280 by 720. If you don't do either of those, you get letterboxed hard. And so I'm playing in a little 1280 by 720 window right now, which makes it very, very difficult to shoot targets that are far, far away. So if you're ever looking at my accuracy and like you're like, Splattercat, why are you so terrible at this game? Just realize that I'm looking at tiny colored pixels right now while I'm firing, and it's actually a lot more difficult than it sounds. Then again, I could play in 1080p, but the other problem there is then it takes me like forever to edit and render the episode. Which then means you guys get less episodes per day, which I don't think you'd be very happy about. I mean, that sounds like something that would make me sad. I mean, when my favorite YouTubers like Jeff Major stops making content, it's going to make me super sad. So I would rather pump out a bunch of day for you guys. God, I'm just nailing headshots here like crazy. Are we like out of reinforcements right now? Oh, I'm out of arrows too. I was going to say, where are my reinforcements at? I'm feeling a little bit weird about this situation. Are they stuck on themselves or like what's going on here? Well, before something terrible happens, I would really... I mean, this is working out great for our strategy, so... Sitting here and just allowing my archers to murder everybody is... A strategy that seems to be working out okay. Let me get myself some more arrows up off the ground here. And then we'll help out with this fight a bit better. At this point, you can pretty much just fire into the blob, and just about anybody you hit will be an enemy. However... 
Ooh, got that guy right between the eyes. Amazing. This is also a great opportunity if you haven't worked on your archery. This is the place to do that. Like, if you need to work on your archery skill, if you're stuck inside a siege, that's where I typically try and get mine done, so... You know. I try and aim high when I'm involved with these things, so that I hit the little guys in the back. And if I can get a kill per shot here, it's like I'm not even aiming at anything right now. I'm just kind of firing into the melee, and every single time I'm getting a headshot. An amazing, amazing thing. It's also helping keep those archers off my melee's backs. We aren't winning the main fight, though. That's the thing, is we are losing in melee. We've had to reinforce, I think, way more times than they have. And I apologize if you're expecting me to wade into the middle of all this right here. I really just don't want to have to wait for the redeployment period, which is why I tend to hang back on sieges and just use arrows. People in the front, they get chewed up pretty well. Well, maybe they had more elite forces than I expected. I may end up very, very alone here. I'd be impressed if they went through 600 units already, though. I mean, they're going through units like a hoe on Friday, but, I mean, it's like... I think we still have guys remaining. We should be alright. I haven't set up what happens to my archers when they run out of arrows, so it might be worthwhile to give my archers the charge order for a little bit, just to see what happens. Oh good, new enemies are here. Down he goes. And what I try and do if I get into the melee here, my strategy is just to drag guys back one by one off the edges. You look for people that are exposed and you just jump on them. You gotta be an opportunist in fights like this because the enemy will 100% do the exact same thing to you. I think I'm gonna give the archers the charge order and I'm just gonna let them do their thing. They should hang back anyways. Assuming that they have arrows. And we'll just allow them to get into the fight for now. Especially since they're accumulating in the back. And that's a problem because that means we're not going to get the reinforcements that we want for a lot of these fights. So let me see if I can find some more arrows on the ground here. There's probably some to be found. Like right there. Yeah, there we go. And so what I'll do is I'll start working on some of these archers in the back. And now I want to disrupt their side flank because they've tried to take the ladder back. They appear to have had quite a few more guards and heavy lancers and things than I expected. Let me see if I can jump in here, take a couple hacks at them. Hacksaws. Oh, we got knocked out. Those damn archers. Like, I don't know what it is about opportunist archers, but they're always... How do we lose 12 morale? Hold on here. So how are we doing? I mean, I need to look at this quantitatively, and how is this fight going? We're down to 31 men, so it is not going well. We'll join the next assault, and we'll hope for the best. Maybe by allowing people to redistribute themselves, we should be okay. So I'm going to spread my archers out right here. And, you know, let them come back down the ladders and fight with us if they really want to. We should have enough men to take this thing, though. I'm really disappointed with my Nordic allies right now. They should be busting through this line like nobody's business. Then again, we've got a singular arrow strike in between us and failure right now. So I'm just going to jump in line behind everybody else. And it looks like the huge, vast majority of all of our kills are coming from archers at the moment. So... Hopefully we can kill off a few more of these knights, kill off a few more warriors and all of those guys, and then we'll be able to take this thing. I don't know if we'll be able to defend it, but we have wiped out a lot of our foes at this point. We have crushed our enemies and driven them before us. Last time I checked, there were only 300 men in front of this thing. I did a head count, so I don't mean to, like, doubt myself or second-guess myself, but I am feeling like maybe this was a bad idea. Let's enact the same strategy that we did previously. Let's bring everybody up the walls, and let's put the archers right here. And this time, we're going to collapse them. So now what we want to do is we want to watch out for all these guys. They should be hitting their B team right now. I mean, 
they keep spawning knights all over the place, which wasn't a contingency that I was expecting. They have a lot more elite troops than I thought they had. I just did a head count for archers, and I didn't see any marksmen or anything like that in any substantial numbers, so... You know, the possibility of a backfire here, it's possible. Right here, archers. Stop being in idiotic places. Although it looks like we finally turned the tide, which will be nice. If we finally take our first big city, I'm going to be really pleased with it. I'm going to ask to be a lord right after we get done with this. And in asking to be a lord, hopefully, we'll get some of that redistributed loot once this thing ends. Oh, they do have a pretty big group of archers here in the back. I didn't know about that. All right. Well, as the battle is over, we lost, like, our entire force, which means we're going to have to go on a recruiting spree after this. But that's all right, because we just probably turned over, like, three or four villages in one battle. After this, I'm going to start looking for castles. Like, we really need to retake as much land as we can. And when we go to war with Swadia, we're going to hit them as hard as possible, too. There it is. So we managed to take back Sargoth, which is a really good step in the right direction for Nords, who lately have just been getting hammered. So there it is. We've taken Sargoth. Let's see what the damage is looking like for everybody else. So, the king. Where is the king at? What did he... Oh, the king came out with 600 men. Well, he went in there and he totally looted the dungeons, I'm guessing. Now, they only left... How are you going to leave 22 men there? I think our opportunity right now is that we need to talk to the king. And he keeps trying to have feasts at times that are just not working out for me. I want to become a sworn man. And we're not going to take any fiefs. So there we are. We are ready. We pay homage. And there it is. So now we are super in deep. Oh, never mind. We gained a little bit. So that's cool. We got reset to zero. I guess whenever you join a new faction, it resets you. Now with Ragnar, what we want to do is we want him to patrol Sargoth for the next little bit. Let's suggest a course of action. We're going to send him to Sargoth because it's only got 24 men manning the walls right now. And if anybody decides to come a-knocking, we are going to be dropping in just flocks. It's going to be really, really ugly. I'm going to hire these Hired Blades because in the last episode we got 23,000 dinars for turning the king back over, which was a huge bounty. In fact, I think I may be sitting at more money than I've ever had over the course of playing Mountain Blade right now. There's no Ransom Broker here at the moment. We didn't get any loot. Our War Horse has been healed, so let's drop him back out. We've got that helmet that I probably need to give to somebody. There's a reason that Nasal Helm was in my inventory. And at the moment, I don't have time to like sort through and figure out who it's for, but I guarantee it's for somebody in my group, so... We'll bear that in mind. We've got a bunch of troops here. Let's ride around, and we need to make sure... Oh, that only gave us two fives, actually. Unfortunately, going to war with Swati is one of those things that is just absolutely going to have to happen in the next little bit. Let's go out, and we're going to get our recruit on, because we've got 71 men, but I'm willing to bet that a large... Yeah, we lost a lot of our guards. We lost tons of Mamluks there. Let's turn them into Hired Blades. Place one of our Mamluks. We've got our first Huskarl for the first time in a while. I'm just going to make infantry for now. Because we are going to be doing a ton of siege warfare. And the knights, in my experience, don't tend to be that great in frontline combat. We have two sword sisters, which is pretty badass. They're one of my favorite units next to hired blades. Let's be about our business. We should probably take Telrog in the next little bit, too. 157 right there. We could take it if we sent the king over there, but that's going to leave Sargoth undefended, so we'll leave that for our next target. Ooh, God. thought I was getting jumped by somebody right there. I always get scared whenever I cross bridges. If you've played Warband for a while, you start to realize that bridges are just a terrible idea. It looks like Dirajun is asking us to come to his next campaign. I am not going to join that one for now, because I just need to recruit. We've got the king standing by at Sargoth, so he should be able to hold anything that goes wrong over there. And I'd like to get back up to at least 90 troops before we join any other campaigns. I'd also like to get them further up the tech tree. Maybe get them into like tier 3 or 4 before I do anything else. In fact, going to the training ring might be a good idea right now. I don't use it very often, but it might be... I might be open to the possibility. We just got jumped by bandits, which is bad. It's never a good thing to be jumped by bandits. Unless they're helping you. They're doing like one of those foothold things where they help you jump over a wall or something. And then we can get jumped up by bandits. But for now... Not something that I'm going to brag about. Okay, we've got another man over there. He can hit me from there, which is bad. So they're on all sides of me. I need to figure out a way to solve this before my shield gets battered. I think right here is going to be my plan. So if I can draw them down the hill to here, we can take shots at whoever comes around the corner. That plant is trying to get in my way. 
the saboteur. I can't tell if they're circling and they're trying to come in from above. But they're trying something right now. There it is. So I got one of them. And where are the... Oh, there he is right there. Okay. Oh, he's behind me. No wonder. Okay, so there's that little bastard. I was hoping I would get the shot off first, but unfortunately I didn't. We may actually lose this one simply because they're firing too many arrows at me and I can't keep them squared away. I think if I move along the edge right here... And I just rotate really rapidly in between... Oh, there's three left. That's even worse. And I need to put them away really, really rapidly. Gotta put them away like a kid's toy. Only once the problem escalates so far that the whole room looks terrible would be the answer to that metaphor. Or that simile. There we go. The moon was a ghostly galleon. That's how I always remember. That's like 100% the highwayman. Like, that's the poem that I always remember when I'm talking about similes and metaphors. And I don't know why that's lasted so long. But it has. Ever since my freshman year in high school, the moon was a ghostly galleon. Set upon something, the lofty sea or something. Or no, the moon was a ghostly galleon is the second line, I think. Anyways, it's been so long since I've heard that poem that I don't remember. This is not Poetry Corner with Splattercat. In any case, they say that the moon is a ghostly galleon, which for some reason always stuck with me. I don't know why. It just always did. We're at 82,000 dinars. We're, we're rich. We are rich as hell right now. No man calls us. We call no man master at the moment because we could pretty much buy out an entire kingdom on our own right now. We still got Cavill in here too. His name reminds me of Gravel, which makes me think that he's probably just like a gravel voice bastard. Let's see if maybe there's some mercenaries upstairs that we can hire. That's always an easy way to get yourself replenished is to find some more hired blades. Now there is a word of warning to be said right there. Before you go out hiring a bunch of buyer, of a bunch of I almost said buyered blades, which a buyered blade isn't even like a thing. But anyways, a hired blade. If you go out hiring a whole bunch of them, one thing to be aware of is they do cost a lot. Like they're really great in combat, but they cost you a lot of money too. Let's make ourselves some footmen right there. And a veteran footman. We'll turn those into guards or infantry whenever they decide to level up. Lazalit has gotten himself nice and chained up to the next level, so let's have a look at his skills. Let me remind myself what he does, though, in the first place. Lazalit, he does nothing, so he is a headbreaker. He's going to be one of our enforcers. Let's get back in. We're going to give him strength 15. It's going to give him power strike 5, which means he's getting a 40% bonus to all damage that he deals right now. And you know what's weird? Out of the corner of my eye, my wireless just died. I have like a wireless adapter because I live in a crappy apartment where they wired it super stupidly and they won't let me drill holes so that I can run Ethernet. And unfortunately that means I have to run everything off wireless because, you know, I kind of like the idea of getting my deposit back. So what this means is that I go through what they don't tell you when you buy wireless technologies. This stuff breaks like left and right. I probably go through like maybe, oh, I would say a router every year or so because I buy maybe like the middle range router, like $70 or so. And those break pretty consistently right outside the manufacturer's warranty. And then I also do the same thing with wireless adapters. And those always seem to break right outside the warranty too. And mine, the little light that flickers on it just got really, really dim. And so I think that it has gone the way of the buffalo. Although the buffalo have recovered. So maybe it will literally go the way of the buffalo and like die off and then come back for a little bit. We can only hope because I still have not gotten to pet a buffalo. If you've watched any of my old videos, one of my main things that I always wanted to do in life was to pet a buffalo. And I have access to a buffalo right this second. Like, I could go see a buffalo if I really, really wanted to. But unfortunately, someone is denying me that buffalo. And it makes me very sad because I want to hug it. Apparently, the buffalo has, like, a really, really, really gravelly tongue. Or a really grindy tongue. And it likes to lick you. Either way, I don't mind. He can lick me. That's cool. I totally like buffaloes. And they're really, really furry. And they're really, really poofy. And I bet they make a sound that's like... Arr. And anything that makes a sound that's like... Arr, and then goes... Pfft. It makes like noises and stuff I'm totally down with. I'm a sucker for cute stuff. I don't know if you guys have noticed that over the course of this. I'm trying to level up Rolf now, by the way. Rolfia's first aid. So let's do that. Aha, we got the pathfinding bonus, unless that was sitting there before. 
Now then, Rolf has first aid and wound a treatment, so we need to go ahead and continue on with those because those are very important. Let's go with wound treatment up to the top right now because I like recovering quickly from battles. And there it is. So now with where we stand, this is going to be a training period where we got to want to get our guys back up and ready for battle. We're not going to answer the call right now because it would be foolish to do so. We also want to make sure that Sargoth isn't being counter sieged at the moment, so I'm going to stand guard over here for the next little bit. We have to level up troops anyway, so I don't see any reason not to. Let's just hang out by Sargoth while we get all of our Huskaros trained, and is the king still over here? Did he abandon it? Damn it, king! Why are you doing these things to me? Well, it looks like we're the last vanguard then, so if they decide to roll out on us with a giant force, that's going to be that, and that's pretty much going to be the end of our plans. Hey, we got 20 more men right there. Even better. So as you can see, they slowly generate new troops. No Huskarls, unfortunately. But as the weeks go by, it's probably going to end up pretty well for us. We failed that quest. I don't care. Jarl Dirajun is not my boss. He is not the boss man of me. You can queue in any Malcolm in the Middle theme you want right there. And I think there was only one, so whatever. You can queue in the Malcolm in the Middle theme. They might be giants if you wanted. It, it kind of irritates me that people could be that talented. Like, when you look at the docket of things that they might be giants might have done, I'm just like, wow, I am totally jealous of your ability to just be completely and totally musically talented. It makes me sad. Deep down, it makes me sad. But then at the same time, your music... And now they've broken up. Like, you've got Jonathan Colton. You've got Perry Grip. Like, they've all gone in different directions and done their own thing. And everything, each person in the group has done equally talented things. It's crazy. Absolutely cray-cray. We're going to buy some food. And is there any good gear here that I can give people? And the answer to that question is no. The gear here totally sucks. Well, we need to send somebody else out to declare us king, so I guess it's Behester's turn. What does he do? I don't want to send anybody out that does something important like pathfinding, so let's send Lazalit since he's just our battle master. Okay, so we'll send Lazalit out. Lazalit is now on the road again to declare us the king of this location. Or this continent. And Dashwall is here with us. I may take Dashwall and tell him to just hang out here. Although it looks as though they've given the city to Dashwall unless he's just hanging out at this location. He's decided to give us the sleepy town of Ambien, which we will 100% take. Because we need fifes in order to make ourselves some money. It's been looted though. Which means we're going to have a bit of a task on our hands. Since there's people here watching out for Sargoth, let's go down and talk to Helbeggy. Or maybe hit Hayen and Ritzi. And there we are. Now that we've danced outside the radius of show tunes being emitted from Ritzy, we'll head on back to Sargoth. And we'll continue to hang out just leveling people up. If there's a training field around here, that might be a better idea so that we can save time. But you know what? I think I'm just going to break the episode off. We'll do one training session. We'll see how that does for us. I think the training field is down here somewhere. There it is. So we'll do one training session, and then after that, we'll break off the episode. We'll do sparring practice against three men, and we'll just say to choose, I don't know, we'll go with Metheld, Nizar, we'll just go with named guys. We got Rolf, and that should do. I mean, I don't think any of these guys, oh good, they gave me a weapon I'm good with too. That's always a pretty deciding factor in whether or not these training methods succeed. One man down, two men down, and then we'll see if we can knock this lady out, and there it is. And so having landed in kind of a precarious situation, we're going to walk away from the battlefield. And that looks as though, I don't even know if that did anything for us. Let's find out. One guy up to warrior, one guy up to footman. So yeah, that's really not worth it, even with our massive training skill at the moment. I think I'm going to break the episode off here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Mountain Blade Volban. This is one of my favorite games of all time, and it is always my absolute pleasure to share it with you. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode, and take care out there, everybody.